Hi everyone! In the last course, we introduced the public network IPv4 over SRV6 BE scenario. This scenario helps implement service connectivity between IPv4 islands when each network still runs IPv4 after the IP backbone network is upgraded to IPv6. However, if some edge networks are upgraded to IPv6, but the others do run IPv4, PEs can provide the IPv4 or IPv6 dual stack service to carry both IPv4 and IPv6 services using the SRV6 BE path on the IP backbone network. In this course, we'll focus on the public network IPv6 over SRV6BE scenario and the differences between the two scenarios. The networking solution is similar to that in the public network IPv4 over SRV6BE scenario. PE1, the P and the PE2 all belong to AS100. It's required that a bidirectional SRV6BE path be established between P1 and P2 to carry public network IPv6 services. The configuration roadmap for this scenario is as follows. First, enable ISIS on P1, the P and the P2, and deploy basic routes. This step is the same as that in the IPv4 scenario. Second, configure an SRV6BE path between P1 and P2. This step is also similar to that in the IPv4 scenario. Third, configure a BGP IPv6 unicast peer relationship between P1 and P2 to transmit routes between R1 and R2. The configuration in this step is slightly different from that in the IPv4 scenario. We'll focus on this part later. For this step, there are mainly two differences between the IPv6 and IPv4 scenarios. In the IPv6 scenario, the eBGP peer relationship between P1 and R1 and that between P2 and R2 need to be configured in the BGP IPv6 unicast address family. In IPv4 scenario, however, uh, the corresponding configurations need to be performed in the BGP IPv4 unicast address family. This is the first difference. The second difference is that the IPv6 scenario requires N.DT6 seeds to be configured to identify IPv6 network access. However, the IPv4 scenario requires N.DT4 seeds to be configured. Note that in this scenario, you are advised to uniformly plan and manually configure root IDs on the entire network. Otherwise, if devices automatically generate identical root IDs, a conflict occurs, preventing BGP peer relationships from being established. After completing end.dt6 seed configuration, check the local seed tables on PE1 and PE2. The command output shows that the seed type is end.dt6 in this scenario. In the IPv4 scenario, however, the seed type is end.dt4. Similar to end.dt4 seed, an end.dt6 seed also consists of a locator and an opcode. Next, let's see how to establish a BGP IPv6 unicast peer relationship between the PEs. Similar to those in the IPv4 scenario, the key configuration steps include adding seeds to roots, configuring root recursion to SRV6BE path, and enabling the current device to exchange root with the specified BGP IPv6 unicast peer. The IPv6 scenario requires these configurations to be performed in the BGP IPv6 unicast address family. In the IPv4 scenario, However, the corresponding configurations need to be performed in the BGP IPv4 unicast address family. 
In addition, you need to run the peer enable command during BGP IPv6 unicast peer configuration. This because a device is enabled to exchange routes only with IPv4 unicast peers by default. After a BGP IPv6 unicast peer relationship is established, the PEs exchange update messages. This implementation is similar to that in the IPv4 scenario. Next, let's look at the BGP update message format in the IPv6 scenario and the format differences between the IPv6 and IPv4 scenarios. First of all, these well-known attributes are the same as those in the IPv4 scenario. As for the differences, one difference is that the BGP prefix seed carries an end.dt6 seed, which is used to indicate IPv6 network access. The other difference is that the address family identifier is IPv6 and IPv6 routes are transmitted in the IPv6 scenario. Let's look at the BGP IPv6 routing table on P1. We can see that the BGP IPv6 unicast route information is consistent with the information carried in the BGP update message. According to the route details, the original next hope is this one. The route recurs to a new next hope, this address, which is the end.dt6 seed on PE2. In addition, SRV6BE is displayed as the outbound interface. The preferred BGP route enters the IPv6 routing table. Therefore, we can also see the route of R2 in the IPv6 routing table. Let's have a look at the details about the route. We can see that the next hope of the route to R2 is changed to this one. And the outbound interface is changed to SRV6BE. PE1 sends BGP IPv6 routes to R1 through the peer relationship. And the preferred BGP IPv6 route on R1 enters the IPv6 routing table. We can see that the IPv6 routing table on R1 contains this route. If we ping R2 from R1, we can find that the ping is successful. This indicates that the configuration is successful. That's all about the implementation of public network IPv6 over SRV6BE in the control plane. Next, let's look at the packet forwarding process. Let's ping R2 from R1 to simulate packet encapsulation. This example assumes that a packet is sent from R1 and then encapsulated on PE1. The packet sent from R1 is an ICMPv6 request for which IPv6 encapsulation is performed on R1. After receiving the packet, PE1 performs SRV6 encapsulation, encapsulating the post-recursion next hope address as the destination address. The packet information displayed on the right shows R2's ICMP reply packet, whose encapsulation format is similar to that of the ICMP request packet. Public network IPv6 root advertisement is similar to public network IPv4 root advertisement, except that IPv6 routes are advertised in the IPv6 scenario. Although public network IPv6 data forwarding is similar to public network IPv4 data forwarding, there are also some differences. Specifically, in public network IPv4 data forwarding, IPv4 packets are sent and the public network IPv4 routing table is searched for packet forwarding. In public network IPv6 data forwarding, however, IPv6 packets are sent and the public network IPv6 routing table is searched for packet forwarding. 
In addition, after PE2 receives a data packet in the IPv4 scenario, it finds a public network instance matching the specified ant.dt4 seed and searches the IPv4 routing table for forwarding. In the IPv6 scenario, however, it finds a public network instance matching the specified ant.dt6 seed and searches the IPv6 routing table for forwarding. That's all for this course on public network IPv6 over SRV6BE. Thank you for watching.